Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, the Knife Raven here, back again with another video after nearly two weeks of silence on my part. Now, to break that silence, I figured I will bring you a review on a recently um, received knife. Uh, by that I mean yesterday in the Morning Post, and it's a knife from a brand I haven't talked about in quite some time. And this is the first knife from said company I have received in over a year. Now that company is Otter Messer. The last Otter knife I received was this one, the Weber Messer, or the Weber's knife. And this knife was almost perfect. Very well finished, had excellent quality in every other aspect except for one. The materials are very nice and it's beautiful in a very rugged way. But sadly, there is quite the significant bend in the blade. And you can see it right there. Unfortunately, this is the one thing that prevented me from calling this a stupendous piece, and rather just a alright knife. Again, in every other aspect, it's a great knife, but that one flaw is a little bit hard to look past. Now, despite this, I have had other Otter knives that have been very impressive. Um, one, in fact, I have here is arguably one of my favorite user knives of all. And this is the Dry Neaton Messer, also known as the Three Rivet Knife. Also made by Otter, this is one of the best finished knives I have from Germany. And was an absolutely excellent buy that I'd recommend to practically anyone. Now, unfortunately, again, the Weber Messer did turn me off the brand for a little while. But after a year, I decided it was high time to start looking into another Otter. And that's partially responsible to another channel. Now, I figure before I forget, I will do this shout out here and now. There is a channel, relatively new, a couple months in the, in the making, here on YouTube called Steel City Knives. Now, Steel City Knives is a very, very, very professional channel, and the the gentleman who runs it is very invested in traditional knives, slip joints and the such. Definitely knives that are up my alley and ones that would pique my interest. Uh, he has quite the impressive little Sheffield collection and just recently he got an otter knife. And it was that video that inspired me to finally go ahead and make a purchase and get myself an otter knife after almost a year. Actually, closer to a year and a half at this point. Anyhow, the knife I went with, I purchased at Warriors and Wonders, Blades Canada. And again, no affiliation with them. I just enjoy purchasing from them. But this knife is one I don't believe has been reviewed yet on all of YouTube. And it is the Otter Messer, Toshin Messer in Wengewood. Now, this is a very, very interesting little knife. It's quite small. I will give you the precise measurements now. The length of the handle is coming in at three and a half inches. The blade is oily, actually. The blade is just a little bit over two and a half with a fairly decent two and a quarters maybe just a little over two and a quarters of cutting length. And the overall length of the knife is just around six inches. So definitely not a large knife, and certainly UK legal. So, without further ado, let's take a look at this in detail. Starting, we have brass pins and brass liners. Pins are very flush, can't feel them at all. Same on this side. Liners are very well done, very symmetrical. There's no gapping on this piece. It might look like there's a little bit of a gap here, but holding it up to the light, absolutely nothing shines through. So I can confirm, no gapping on this piece. Cutoff of the spring is very good. 
Blade centering is almost perfect, maybe just a little bit off to the right. Again, you can see. Very close, but just not quite perfect. Again, I'm not going to care about such such a small distance. But there is that. The bolsters, and this is what's quite special, most otter knives use uh, carbon steel for the bolsters, or depending on the model you choose, stainless steel. However, this knife uses brass. And for those who watch my channel, you know I quite like brass. It's quite the, the change to your usual nickel silver. And because of that, I very much appreciate seeing it. These bolsters are very simple. There is no, say, there's no pinching or milling on them. They definitely aren't as detailed as the dry neat and messer with these very nice, intricately carved bolsters. But very nice, very flat. Again, great transitions overall. You can barely feel the difference. No gaps. You have a very, very, very unique handle on this knife. This is wenge wood, which is quite the expensive timber. And I must say, the grain pattern on this is unlike anything I've seen before. The closest, I guess, similar look I have seen on a wooden handle is from black palm wood, which technically isn't even a wood, it's of the grass family, alongside bamboo. And black palm has this very characteristic dark brown and black stripe pattern. And again, that's the only thing I can compare this to. The grain pattern and the detailing in it is quite, quite phenomenal. It's unlike anything I've really seen before. Again, beautiful, beautiful striping. The other side is the same. You can see there are these lovely streaks going throughout. Again, I absolutely love the appearance of this. I am a, I'm a very, very big fan of exploring different knife handle materials, but personally my favorites are always wooden handles, preferably of the exotic kind. I still like rosewoods and basic hardwoods. For example, this is an Arthroid Etric in rosewood, and even it has a very nice little pattern to it. Here it is next to, I guess, a, a Groman, also featuring rosewood. So even the more basic handles can still have a very nice sheen to them. Again, here's the Webermesser in Sapelli, which has a similar sheen as the Wenge wood, but again, completely, completely different grain pattern on these two materials. And while I'm here, I'll bring in the three rivet with its grenadilla or African blackwood, which has a very, very inky black sheen to it. I've noticed that otter knives, perhaps it's the polish that they use when they finish these, they always have a standard glimmer to them. And a lot of other knives don't do it, but otters always do. And I very much appreciate it. It's, it. It is quite the beautiful look. But anyhow, there you are. I don't have any other Wenge knives to compare this to, because this is my first knife in this material. And I definitely think more knife makers should consider using this. It's very, very pretty, and it has a great look to it. Not to mention a very unique texture. You can almost feel the grain. And I don't mean that in the sense that it's similar to oak, where it's coarse, but rather you can feel the smoothness, but also with these occasional little, I suppose you could say hills, these little tiny heightened bits that are a little bit taller than the rest. And it just makes for a Really, really wonderful feel in the hand. 
The handle is a teardrop shape, by the way, very symmetrical. This is what would be considered a boy's knife with the spear point blade, single bolster, and teardrop. Blade opens with a nail nick, of course. Very, very strong action. Has a nice, solid half stop. Let's try that again. Spring does sit a little proud. The opening isn't as snappy as some knives. Of course, it's no Arthur Wright, but still very positive. You have your satin finished, freshly oiled spear point blade with the otter catching his fish and Zollingen, Germany. No markings on this side. Very nice flat grind and a very prominent nail nick which will make opening this quite the breeze, even if you don't have long nails. The blade is made of C75 carbon steel, which is a good middle-of-the-road carbon steel. It's, it's not O1. It doesn't have absurd Rockwell hardness, but it's definitely better than some of the lower-end carbon steels, like, say, uh, C67, I believe it's called, or C70. I know that these are slightly better than Arthur Wright when it comes to edge retention, but they're within the same realm. Again, here's an Arthur Wright. This one has a bit of a patina, I believe. Very slight, but this is a C70 Etric. Just for a size comparison, too, I often use the Etrics as they're something very recognizable on my channel. You can see that the Etric is a bit longer but that is to be expected with the size of the handle. Here is the Groman Slimline for looking at general size comparisons. Again, quite a bit longer. Here is the closest comparison I can find of an actual otter knife with another otter knife. And this is the Weaver's knife for the vapor messer. Very similar, although the vapor messer is ever so slightly longer, but very, very similar. And then while I'm here, I will just throw the three rivet in just as an extra comparison. When I originally was looking into getting this knife, I was under the impression it was the same size as the dry neaten messer. And when I checked the measurements again and found out it was much closer to the weaver's knife, I was actually quite surprised, but not necessarily disappointed, as I quite like smaller knives. Again, they're lighter, easier to carry, and despite this still having a very traditional friendly appearance, there's still the chance it could scare some people. This, I don't think that's I don't think that's gonna be a problem. This isn't the pointiest spear blade I have ever seen, although it definitely isn't blunt. Still could get some decent piercing done with this. You're not going to have as pronounced of a tip as with a Warren Cliff, for example. Again, Weaver's Knife. But I'll bring in another German-made spear point knife of a similar price range. Actually, pardon me. The Otter is a bit more expensive than you'd expect. And I believe it might be that this is a more special handle material that Otter doesn't normally use. But for whatever reason, this was quite expensive. This knife was around 150 Canadian dollars, which is significantly higher than the Weaver's knife, which I don't even think came to 110. But here it is next to another German-made spear point. This is the Friedrich Hartkopf Taschenmesser in Redwood. And as much as I prefer the brass on the Otter, I must say that the price of the Hartkopf is unbeatable in comparison. This knife cost about 46 pounds, so maybe like 80, 85 Canadian, maybe less, but this is still an absolutely stunning knife, one of my favorites. There you are. So, 
yeah, this is a very interesting little knife. No blade wrap, by the way, as there is a stop pin. Nice action. Don't know if I mentioned, but there is no blade play whatsoever. Came very, very sharp, as would be expected from an otter. And the transition from the blade to the spring is all right. Again, you can definitely see that there is a difference, but does that affect the performance? Not at all. So what are my thoughts on this knife? Well, I think that for a traditional pocket knife, it's very, very nice. It's got a good feel in the hand, four finger grip, half stops, sp strong spring, carbon blade, nice spear point blade shape, has brass, and a very, very pretty handle that blends very well with the brass. And overall, I definitely think that this is one of the nicer otter knives that I have seen. The craftsmanship is much, much better than on the weaver's knife. And the weaver's knife wasn't bad, it was just that one warp that kind of wrecked it for me. This knife, um, when it comes to the warping department, it isn't the straightest blade I've ever seen, but it only veers off a little bit. And the weaver, again, is a lot more noticeable overall. I have since heard also that sometimes blades are bent so that the blades can be straight within the liners so that they aren't offset and rubbing the inside of the knife. But even so, regardless of whether this was done on purpose or if it was accidental, I don't believe that this is a significant issue. Again, that is far from the worst blade centering I have ever seen. And I certainly think that despite the knife having quite the inflated price tag, again, it's definitely far from outrageous. It's, it's within the higher end range, a bit closer to a boker, perhaps. But I still think for the level of craftsmanship you're getting, and really the materials that are featured on this piece, and just the overall, well, usability of this type of knife, I think it's worth it personally. Again, I don't know if I'd recommend this to you if you're looking for a budget German-made knife, because in that case, I would definitely point you towards looking for a Friedrich Hartkopf, although much more elusive. These are considerably cheaper if you can find them at the right place. But again, if you're a fan of otter knives, you have an anchor messer, you have a dry neaten messer, maybe you have the Mercator, Little Doctor, or really just any otter knives, and you want to add a unique one to your collection, maybe with a different handle material and a different type of bolster, this would be a great choice, in my opinion. Again, I don't really have many boys' knives. I definitely tend to have a larger collection of, again, Etrick, Swaybacks, and Barlows, but I always wanted to get a well-made traditional boys' knife in my collection, and since I can't get the GEC Huckleberry Boys knife, I, I think that this will be a very good substitute. Again, carbon steel, very good fit and finish, definitely handmade, and because of that it's not sterile, it's not overtly perfect. But regardless, I still think that this is a very nice knife, and personally, I think it was a good purchase. So, thank you very much for watching. This has been The Otter Messer. Toshin Messer in Wengewood, and this is the Knife Raven, as always, signing off. Goodbye.